right, folks, so we are working on getting our clay loom set up to weave. So you should have an even number of holes going around that outer edge of your loom and one in the middle. You could also have chosen to use notches instead of holes. Both strategies work. You will need a scissors. You may want either a yarn needle or a blunt sewing needle. You're going to probably want a roll of tape and then you're going to need some yarn. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create the warp threads. Warp threads are usually the ones that go up and down. These are the ones that we are weaving in and between. So I'm going to select a color for my warp thread. A great way to remember which one is the warp and which one is the weft. Weft goes from left to right. Warp, if you pull too tight, will actually change your loom if you are working with like a cardboard or paper loom. So I'm going to start with my warp thread. I've threaded my needle. I have my string ready to go. I don't need to tie a knot necessarily. I'm going to start from my middle hole. I'm going to go up. Pulling my thread all the way through my yarn all the way through so that there's just a little bit of a tail at the back then I'm going to work from one side of my loom to the other going each time out to the hole on the edge and then back in to the middle it's kind of a similar process to sewing if you are working with a needle you can also just wrap your loom if you are working with notches it's the same concept instead of going through a hole though you're just going around that notch. So I've got two. I'm going to keep going. Each time I'm going back into that middle hole. I'm pulling it all the way through. I'm going out to my outer hole and pulling it through. If you get to a hole and it's just not big enough for you to poke your needle through, you can skip that hole. So for me, that one was just not quite big enough. So I'm going to move on over to this one over here. And then I'm going to go back to the middle and I'm just going to keep repeating that process over and over again until I have all of my warp threads in position. So now I've got four and I'll keep going, like I said, until I have all of them in position. The more strings I have going through that middle hole, the harder it's going to be for me to put my needle through. So at this time, I'm actually going to choose to just not go through the hole and just to kind of wrap around from that middle part of the base of my loom. I can use the little end of my string later to help hold that in place. So there's almost all of the holes. Then I'm going to do two of the ones over here on the side. Again, starting from the one closest to where I left off and then making my way to the last one. Oops. And if you have left a big loop, you might find that your string is getting stuck on another part of your loom. Just take a pause, fix it so that it's ready to go and keep moving forward. Sometimes we can find ourselves getting frustrated, but we don't need to. We can just take a pause, take a deep breath, and just keep moving forward. All right, I've got one last hole to thread, but because my needle came off my thread, I'm gonna pause, re-thread up my needle so that I can keep going. If you find that the edges of your string have gotten frayed, a tip for you for those needle threading processes is to trim yourself a new edge so that your yarn is more pulled together. And then it's a little bit easier to pull it through. Doesn't always work perfectly, but it tends to be a little bit easier if those ends of the thread are all together like friends. Alrighty, one last hole and then I am home free to start weaving with my weft threads. There we go. At this time, I can do a couple of different things. I can tie my ends together. I could use some tape. It's up to you. Whatever you think is going to help your craftsmanship, the way that you use your material, look the best. I'm going to tie a knot for myself and then I could easily, after I've double knotted it, trim off those excess threads if I don't want them to be hanging out there. I'm going to flip myself over to the front of my loom. This is what I've got to work with. Now I can take the first thread that I want to use for my weft threads. I think I'm going to work with this 
fun brown color. I'm gonna thread my needle. Again, if I have a frayed end, I can trim it. I can wet it. I can use a little paper hot dog bun to help pull it through. All great strategies for being able to thread one's needle. All right, when we weave, we go over, under, over, under, all the way across. If you gave yourself an even number of warp threads, you should be able to just wrap yourself around and repeat that process. So I went over, under, over, under. My next one goes over, then I go under, then I go over, then I finish by going under. I'm going to pull my string through so I just have a little tail. I'm going to wrap my way around and I'm again going to go over, under, over, under, all the way across until I make my way back to the middle. If I have my pattern correct, it should be the opposite of what I did before. So I'm going over, then under, then over, and under, and I've made my way back to where I started. I can tuck, tuck, tuck to make sure my threads are tight. Then I can keep going. I'm wrapping my way around, going over, because I left off by going under. Then I go under. Then I go over. And I'm gonna just keep going until I make my way to the end of this string. Keeping going, keeping up that pattern. That pattern is gonna help hold my loom, my warp threads together. This is how the early fabrics were created. Fun factoid. It is still how fabric is created, except now we create it on more of an industrial scale rather than wooden looms or clay looms or whatever structure people use for their looms. Alrighty, and again, if you're moving too quick and you get yourself stuck on something, just pause, take a deep breath, untuck it so that it's ready to go. So you just kind of keep that pattern going, going over, under, over, under, all the way across. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Take a deep breath, pause your work, go back and fix it. Mistakes happen, they're not the end of the world. When you get to the end of your thread, you have a couple of different craftsmanship options. You can either tuck your thread back into your weaving, you can leave a tail to tie off later, or you can tie it directly to the next string that you're gonna use as a weft thread. Remember, wefts go from left to right. Warps usually go up and down. In our case, they're kind of radiating out from the middle, but for most looms, they go up and down. Alrighty, again, I'm just continuing that pattern of going over, under, over, under, as I move from left to right with my strings. Now I'm at that point where I can make one of a couple of different choices. I could either go back in and just tuck my string into my weaving. I could take these little, my needle and poke through that end spot to tuck it back in that way. A couple of different choices. I think I'm gonna go one more time across and then I'm going to tuck it into my loom or into that little end area, which is kind of like a tunnel so that my yarn is secure it's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm tucking through those loops there at the end, pulling it tight. That's gonna help keep my weaving nice and secure. I could then trim off these extra ends. As I finish, I can move on to my next string and just kind of continue that process. You can decide with these clay looms how far you want your weaving to go, depending on how you're incorporating it into your design is gonna change how you solve this design problem. That's a wrap.